This video illustrates power amplification. Amplification typically means we're increasing the level of something. Our circuit will be a simple analogy to a stereo system in which a turntable drives a speaker. The turntable itself produces power levels that are much too small to drive the speaker directly, so we need to amplify the power produced by the turntable in order to create sound. Here's an example of the use of amplifiers to increase power. It's a simple audio system consisting of a turntable, an amplifier, and speakers. The turntable has a needle which rides on the grooves of a record. The needle connects to a piezoelectric material which flexes when the needle passes over bumps in the record. Piezoelectric materials put out a voltage when they're flexed, so they can convert the needle's deflection to a voltage level. We want to convert this voltage to sound through our speakers. Most speakers use an electromagnet to produce sound. Current flows through a coil, which causes a magnet to move back and forth as the current changes. The magnet's connected to a cone. As the cone moves, it creates pressure waves, which we hear as sound. Fairly high currents are required in order to move the magnet back and forth. Sadly, the piezoelectric material in a phonograph needle puts out almost no current. We need to amplify the power before sending it to the speakers. This is done with an amplifier. This amplifier typically has more than one stage. It usually has a preamplifier, which feeds a power amplifier. In really upscale audio systems, the preamplifier will often be a separate component. Note that the amplifier and turntable are plugged into wall outlets. This provides the source of power that these devices are using to perform the amplification, not to mention the power necessary to actually turn the platter on the turntable. This is a piezoelectric sensor. It works roughly the same way the needle of a phonograph works. If we bend it, it puts out a voltage difference between these two terminals. This is my speaker. If I connect the terminals of the sensor to the speaker, and then flick the sensor, we should get some sound out of the speaker. Unfortunately, this sensor doesn't put out nearly enough power to make the speaker cone move. We need to amplify the power leaving the sensor before it can move the speaker. Here's a schematic of the circuit we'll use to demonstrate amplification. A schematic's a picture that represents the circuit we'll build. Circuit elements are represented by symbols on the schematic. Interconnections between circuit elements are represented by lines. Here's our representation of the piezoelectric sensor. And here is the speaker we want to drive. We've used both a preamplifier and an amplifier stage to power the speaker. Our preamplifier is implemented using an operational amplifier, this triangular symbol here. One nice property of operational amplifiers is that they have what is called a high input impedance. This preamplifier circuit draws almost no current from the sensor. A drawback of our operational amplifier is that it doesn't put out much output current. The preamplifier circuit by itself may drive our speaker to some extent, but the effect won't be very dramatic. We've added a second stage to increase the power considerably. This circuit's called a Class B amplifier. Unfortunately, it does require a relatively large input current, which is why we need the preamplifier, but it can also provide a bunch of current at its output. The increase in power provided by the amplifier has to come from somewhere. Power can't just be created from nothing. Therefore, both the preamplifier and amplifier have external voltages applied to them, positive Vs and negative Vs. These voltage supplies provide the power output by the amplifier to the speakers. They have the same effect as power provided by the wall outlets on a real audio system. This is the implementation of the circuit I showed on the previous schematic. To interconnect the circuit components, I've used a solderless breadboard. Inserting components in the holes in the breadboard allows us to connect the components. All the holes in each row of the breadboard are electrically connected, so I can connect wires by plugging them into two different holes in the same row. This is the operational amplifier and the preamplifier circuit. The piezoelectric sensor is connected to the input of the preamplifier, and the output of the preamplifier is connected to the Class B amplifier. The large transistors in the Class B amplifier provide plenty of power to the speaker.
I've used these 6 volt lantern batteries to provide power to both the preamplifier and the amplifier circuits. These batteries are where the speaker is actually getting its power from. The voltage being put out by the piezoelectric sensor is just controlling the power provided by the batteries to the speaker. Now, if I bend the piezoelectric sensor, the output's amplified and the speaker responds to the motion of the sensor. This little project illustrated several concepts that are commonly used when designing electrical systems. There's a sensor which converts some non-electrical parameter into something which can be used to make an electrical system respond. In this case, the piezoelectric sensor converts deflection to voltage. The circuit itself, like most electrical systems, has multiple stages. In this case, we have a first stage, a preamplifier, and a second stage, a power amplifier. When we design different stages of a circuit, we have to make sure that the stages will work together once the overall circuit is assembled. One factor is to make sure that no stage requires more power than the previous stage can provide. In the case of the circuit for this project, the power amplifier requires more power than the sensor produces, so we put a preamplifier between the two.